hey y'all what's up it's jessica welcome back thank you guys so much for tuning in today y'all i know it's been forever in a day since i have been on youtube filmed a video chatted with you guys it's been i think this has been the longest time i've been away from youtube but it was definitely needed and necessary and i just want to say thank you so much to every single one of you guys who was understanding who was just thoughtful who was encouraging during that time you guys were sending me well wishes sending me prayers even if you didn't really know what was going on you were still just being just considerate and i do appreciate that i appreciate that more than anything in the world because you can have fans I don't need fans. I don't want fans, but I just love genuine people. And you guys were just so genuine, so patient, so understanding. And I thank you so much for that because it was definitely needed. Thank you for the prayers and all of that. If you clicked on, the, on this video, then you probably know what this video is about. And I'm just going to dive right in. I don't have anything planned out to say, um, but I just want to I didn't know how to come back to YouTube. I was trying to figure out like what video should I start with? I didn't want to start off just being gone for so long and then doing like a fashion video, a makeup tutorial, a hair tutorial because I felt like that would kind of be awkward <laughs> being gone and then boom just with some you know some random content so I was like I'm going to put myself in a very uncomfortable and vulnerable position and just be honest and share something that I've been going through the reason why I was gone for so long um someone a person like me who's very private very just you know i keep it together um this whole time this whole time i've been away it has taught me to be vulnerable which is the hardest thing to do for a person like myself it is very hard to do but i'm in my 30s and it's about time that i learned how to be vulnerable so guys i was pregnant i found out i was pregnant back in july I was so excited to just start a new journey already having one child and we wanted another one initially we wanted to wait until we had another child we wanted to wait until um, just we just wanted to wait <laughs> honestly we, that's just what we wanted to do but you know we thought about it actually we didn't even think about it we were just like you know what let's just start our family you know we're not gonna wait until all of our plans are just hit you know sometimes you just have this plan in your head like if it's not the way you planned it then you don't want to make moves and it's good to have plans but sometimes you know sometimes it's okay to steer away from the plan a little bit you know give yourself a little breathing room so we were like you know what kai's not getting any younger she's getting older we're definitely not getting any younger okay we i will be 32 this year what so not getting any younger and we were like let's expand our family and i found out i was pregnant back in july and actually before i even found out i was pregnant the first person weeks before i found out that i was pregnant who told me i was pregnant was actually my daughter she we were at a restaurant and we i took her to the restroom and she just started jumping up and down like real giddy and happy and i'm like girl like what's what's good and she was just hugging my stomach and kissing my stomach now mind you my stomach was big it was bloated okay because um flow she was about to make her appearance in a few weeks so you know how that goes and my daughter just started jumping up and down kissing my stomach and i'm like hi can we can we not do that there's people around like what are you doing this is weird and i'm like what are you doing and she's like i'm kissing the baby and I'm like, baby, no, girl, there's no baby in there, okay? That's just, mama just ate some pasta, so mama's a little bloated. That's all that is. And she said, no, you're fat because you're pregnant. And I'm just like, okay, read me my rights. Like, that was very shady. <laughs> she really read me my rights, okay? It was very shady, a very shady moment. I was like, oh, okay, clutch my pearls and everything. Um, a few days after that, I started to feel, or not a few days, maybe a week after that, I started to feel super weird. And I'm just like, oh my God, why do I feel this way? Um, it was like, just a strange feeling. And I'm like, I don't I don't know why I feel this way, but I'm just gonna take a pregnancy test. Cause what, a, why, why, do I, why would I feel this way other than being pregnant? So I took about three tests and they all came back negative. So I was like, okay, well I'm not pregnant. So maybe this is just going to be an intense period i'm like maybe i'm flow is just gonna be very vicious this month i don't know because i felt strange but the test came back negative so i was like 
you know the pregnancy thing just kind of went over my head like okay I don't have to worry about that but that weird feeling just intensified as the days went by as the weeks went on and I'm like something's not right like I kept telling my husband something's not right I don't know what's what's wrong and he's like well you're probably pregnant and I'm like well the test came back negative so I don't I don't know so I was like you know what let me buy another test but let me get the clear blue because I need to actually say pregnant like I needed to say it so this was before my missed period and I took the clear blue test and it said pregnant so I was like <gasps> like I just I just was like shocked I don't know why I was you do the deed to get pregnant and then you're still shocked that you're pregnant I don't get it <laughs> but I was shocked when I saw that it said pregnant so we were excited the strange thing about it like i told you guys my daughter told me that i was pregnant once we told her that we were having a baby she was so excited but then she was like yeah we're having twins i'm like wait what Who? no we're having a we're having a baby we're having a baby and she's like no we're having two girls we're having twin girls and she named them guys and they were the most beautiful names and i'm like my daughter be, she be scaring me sometimes I'm like oh okay well I'm just gonna say there's a baby in there you can you can believe what you want <laughs> but she was very adamant that there was two my husband was extremely excited I think I was a little bit more reserved because I'm like you know there's this thing where as a woman you're excited and happy about it but you know you want to just let things play out you want to just wait you want to just I kind of wanted that moment for ourselves for a while and then come up with like really cool ways to like tell my family but I wasn't like trying to shout it out you know from the mountaintops like I wasn't trying to do all that my husband on the other hand was he did not care I said let's let's wait until like we have our first doctor's appointment first like can we do the, can we see the baby first but y'all he wasn't having no parts of that he was telling everybody from his job to his family um, rightfully so he was excited to have a second child and we honestly did not care whether it was a boy or a girl like we just really didn't care we just wanted a healthy baby so we were just excited about that so when he started telling everybody I was like well shoot I gotta start telling people too because it would just be weird if somebody on my side of the family found out and it wasn't for me they're like wait you didn't tell me that you know so I just started telling people on my family and yeah so they knew that we were pregnant our family close friends everybody knew we were pregnant and I was super excited I can say that during my pregnancy I was it was very different than when I was pregnant with Kai I was so tired like tired is definitely an understatement I was exhausted I was fatigued girl I was exhausted I could not stay up to save my life I am not a napper girl but I would just clock out like clock out on the couch and my poor daughter because she would just be like mom like it's time to play like what are you doing and I couldn't I had no energy I had no energy for nothing I would just be so tired I would be hungry all the time like I would literally just put a whole bunch of fruit on the side of the bed and wake up at four o'clock in the morning and just be eating bananas because I was just so hungry all the time I felt sick um but real moody girl like mm, I already don't be having time for stuff but this was like a whole nother level like every like I was just agitated like just I just wanted people to use common sense and it just seemed like people didn't have that and I would just be like I don't have time for you right now can you go away I was just very just like can we just can we use our sense so it was definitely different I I remember being pregnant with Kai and I was a lot more like just you know go with the flow i was very excited and happy and it was an easy pregnancy being pregnant with kai but girl that this one i don't know i don't know it was intense we had went over to my husband's family's house like one one of the side of his family's house and um you know he had already told them that i was pregnant and they were just looking at my stomach and they're like oh how how far along are you and I'm like oh I'm only at this time I was only five weeks and I'm like oh I'm only five weeks and they're like do like do you like for sure know your dates I'm like I for sure like I'm I'm more than more than 100% positive that I'm only five weeks pregnant like I yeah <laughs> and they're like that's yeah um your stomach is huge so either a you are further along than what you think 
or you are pregnant with twins you know your stomach is saying otherwise and i'm like oh no it's just bloat like i just be bloated and I, I was bloated guys i was really bloated but this was like crazy because my stomach was very very large and i was showing so fast like i couldn't hide the fact that i was pregnant and i was and i was just just five weeks at the time and they were like yeah i think it's twins and they started giving me um some family history that twins runs in my husband's side of the family which we did not know about at all no one ever told us he didn't know so i was just like oh nervous my nerves i even had a dream that i was having twin girls and i woke up and that dream was so vivid and felt so real and i was just like oh my god now i'm having dreams and i'm having twin girls like what is going on so yeah I, I even sent i was on the phone with my sister who is pregnant as well but she's way further along than i am i think at the time when i was like five or six weeks she was 16 16 weeks or something like that and guys i was showing more than her and she's just like and this is her second child as well so we we're both on our second child and she was just like okay no you're having twins how is your stomach so like you're showing more than me and I'm way further along so yeah this was definitely something that was different than my first pregnancy like uh, I know you show faster with your second pregnancy but this was like it was no doubt I don't know if there was twins or not but I do know that it was definitely a different pregnancy and I was showing and everyone around me said you're having twins so it could have been I don't know why I'm still out of breath <laughs> it could have been that so fast forward August 27th this was the day after Kai's birthday up until this point the only symptoms I had was just I was craving like burgers like meat like I needed like beef juicy fat beef and I was craving fruit in the morning um, I was super tired and I was uh, just feeling like nauseous and just kind of like just not myself very intense symptoms to the point where I couldn't even film like I wanted to film I had so many videos planned I could not film anything because my body was just like couldn't do anything and plus the fashion videos that I had planned there would be no denying that people would be asking me like are you pregnant because I was showing so I just like <laughs> was like let me just lay low for a second um until we announce it so August 27th um a normal day a normal me just being tired I was like okay I'm gonna go take a nap Kai let's go take a nap so I'm getting us ready to go in the bed as soon as I get in the bed I feel something come out initially I didn't know what it was but I feel something come out and in my head I already know it's blood even though I didn't see anything because what else would be coming out of me so I go check and I'm just like in a panic I'm like oh my god no 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 Lord please God please don't let it be the worst so I called my doctor and they were asking me all these questions like is it enough to fill a pad blah blah blah, blah. I'm like it, it just happened so it's not enough to fill a pad but it, there's blood and it's you know um, it's alarming and they're just like well this sounds like it could be a miscarriage but you know just sit in the bed with your feet up like just stay rested and drink plenty of water blah 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 and it's just like okay like that doesn't help me it doesn't help me <laughs> but oh I'll do that so I then talked I called my husband and then he left work early and then he came home and when he came home he was in a panic he was like let's go to the hospital right now let's just go to the emergency room in that very moment I did not want to leave my house I didn't want to go to the emergency room I just wanted to sit down I wanted to relax I wanted to gather my thoughts my composure I wanted to get in a state of prayer and meditating on God's word I just wanted to re like release the panic and then just come to a place where of rationality and just calm down and just focus on just being calm that's that was my main goal so I said I don't want to go to the emergency room right now I'm just going to just relax and then went to YouTube and I was just trying to find anything um, related to bleeding during pregnancy that did not involve miscarriage like I was not receiving that I was like I don't I don't know I'm not receiving that so let's find an alternative and I found out al alternatives of women who had bleeding during pregnancy and nothing was really wrong or they had like a subchorionic hemorrhaging or implantation bleeding or something dealing with the placenta 
detaching itself during its formation I don't know there's a lot of factors so I was just trying to hope for the best like maybe you know in my case it would be one of those around 12 I finally my husband was like look we need to go like you need to go because I'm I'm worried too so I was like fine I went into before we left I was like let me just let me just take a shower so I went into the bathroom and I just remember sobbing y'all like crying my eyes and heart out because I was so devastated and hurt and I'm just like you know I don't understand why this is happening and immediately like these very negative thoughts started coming to my head thoughts like look at what you look at what you did to your family like you just like thoughts that were that were shaming me like shameful thoughts like look at what you did to your family look at how you disappointed them like if you you if you lose this baby you are disappointing your daughter you're disappointing your husband and just all these negative thoughts that were blaming me for why this happened and then I was just like you know I'm not about to I'm not about to dwell on this negativity because I know who and where it's coming from and so I'm gonna send it right back to where it came from and I'm going to go to the word and I'm gonna go into the scripture and I'm going to allow what God says to be the things that I dwell on to be the things that I meditate on and not not dwell on what the enemy is trying to throw my way because no one has time for that I begin to just recite the Bible I re I begin to pray I begin to say Lord you know right now in this very moment I'm emotionally and mentally and physically weak I need you to be my strength I need you to be the strength in my weakness I need you to take away these feelings take away the devastation in this moment and just exchange it for peace I may not understand it but give me peace that passes my understanding and so we were driving to the emergency room and I just was calm I was calm not knowing what to expect not knowing what to see when I went to the hospital but I was just calm and we get to the hospital they do a ultrasound on me they're not telling me anything because I think legally they cannot ex ex enclose disclose information to you um, because they're not the doctor so the technician is not um, responsible for giving you that information because if they do they can then be sued if they give you false information something like that so they're not going to give you any information the nurse um, who was like she wasn't she was the nurse in the room with the technician and she was just smiling at me and stuff but I was like reading through the smile and I'm like something must be wrong because why is she looking at me like that like why is she smiling like that and like she's overcompensating because they must see something or nothing so I get into the patient room and the doctor comes in and he's just very he looks like he looked like and sounded like he was ready for his shift to be over okay he looked like he was through tired I wants to go home and get some sleep that's kind of like his vibe and he was like yeah you know we looked at your ultrasound and y'all this is exactly how he came in we looked at your ultrasound and um yeah it looks like you are having a miscarriage so yeah expect um to lose the baby I mean the good thing is your levels are really really high you know your levels are beyond 20,000 which in your early pregnancy is very very high but um, looks like this is not a viable pregnancy because we didn't see anything in there we didn't see uh, the baby so um, if this is a miscarriage expect it to be expect to lose the baby that's exactly I was just like well thank God I prayed before I came <laughs> because I would have been like a wreck and so we're listening to this information and so we get we leave the doctors and I just remember feeling confused like not devastated but confused like okay so am I having a miscarriage or like what's good like what's like what's going on and my husband is very like hopeful he was like well we didn't get really good news but we didn't get really bad news so there's still hope like I believe the baby is still in there da 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 and I already had my six week at this yeah at this no at this point I thought it was eight weeks pregnant and I had my eight week appointment my eight week appointment um already scheduled so the day after that I already had a, an appointment scheduled I went to my regular OB doctor and um explained to her or she could see it on the chart that I was experiencing bleeding she looked at the ultrasound and she was like yeah the ultrasound that they did I don't see a fetal 
you know, pull anything in there. But um, I'll do an ultrasound now. So she checked me and she was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing anything in here. I didn't see anything on the screen either. So I didn't see anything as well. And she was like, what's strange is that your levels are just so high. You know, you only see levels like this and you're only what I thought I was eight weeks. I was actually only measuring six weeks. And she was like, you're actually only six weeks, but your levels are so high. And the only time you see levels like this is if you're pregnant with twins. So either A, the baby will appear in a few days or B, this is a um, miscarriage. So I was just like, okay, you know. At this point, I've heard miscarriage so many times that I kind of became numb to it. Um, after that, I just remember just praying and just asking God, like, you know, please save my baby. Like, who wants to lose a baby? No one wants to lose a baby. I don't care how far along or how early you are in your pregnancy. It's still devastating, regardless. And um, I just remember praying and asking God for strength and to just to make a miracle happen and just to allow my baby to survive and different things like that I still felt I still felt pregnant I was just like you know just so like the bleeding was non-stop I bled for a total of 20 days non-stop heavy bleeding for 20 whole days I remember being at a school orientation for my daughter there was a there's a homeschool program at one of the schools over here where they go to a homeschool based school for one to two days a week and then you do the rest of the curriculum at home so we were looking into that and i remember the instruct the director who was giving us the tour very nice lady but she was like really 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 pregnant like she was like about to pop in a few weeks maybe two weeks or so and i remember just like talking to her about the school and whatever the case may may be and i just remember feeling this gush of just stuff coming out of me and i have to keep my composure you would never know that I am mis having a miscarriage. You would never know. Keeping my composure because I came there to learn about the school from my child. So I'm just talking to her, whatever, laughing and all that stuff. Me but meanwhile, I'm having a miscarriage. And then here comes this thought again. And this thought was like, look at the woman next to you. Look at how she's able to carry her baby full term. And meanwhile, you're losing yours right now. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel that you're standing next to a woman who's able to carry a child? meanwhile yours is dying this evil thought so while i'm talking to this woman I, I have to mentally cast down those thoughts those imaginations and say you know what no i'm not i'm not going to focus on that i'm not about to allow this thought or the enemy make me think something negative and so as i'm casting down that those thoughts the holy spirit i, I remember it clear as day just speaking to me and saying Will you allow your situation to make you bitter? Will you allow your situation to make you covet um, pregnancy when you see other women pregnant? Will you, Or will you allow your situation to make you stronger? Will you look at this and have compassion for people um, who are going through things like this? How will you allow your situation, how will you respond to your situation? And in internally, I responded back and said, I will respond the way I'm supposed to respond. I'm not going to allow my situation to make me bitter. I'm not going to allow my situation to make me covetous of people who are able to carry their child or their, their babies full term. I'm not going to allow myself to get in that mind, that headspace, because that's not godly. So I'm not going to allow myself to get there. And then that was it. I felt just this peace while I'm still going through it. After we had the tour of the um school i remember getting to the car and guys it was like you turning on a faucet and it was just gushing out i remember telling my husband um i need to get to a doctor i need to get to a doctor i need to get to a bathroom immediately so we pulled up to chipotle i went to the bathroom and i remember i don't sit on pub public toilets y'all okay um not even with like a sanitary i don't do it but this time I had to sit on that toilet because what was coming out of me, it was just crazy. It was like this big old mass of stuff just came out of me. And mind you, during this whole time, I'm not in any pain. It's just a very strange feeling. And so this thing comes out of me. 
I want to reach in and grab it, but I'm not at home, so I don't have anything to, to place it in. I can't ins inspect it. I can't do anything. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, this could be my baby or babies, and I'm not even able to look at them or view them or anything like that. I just had to flush the toilet and just let that be, let that be what it was. Let it be it. I remember coming out of the bathroom. My daughter's eating, my husband's eating, he's just looking at me and I'm just kind of like numb at this moment because I've never experienced anything like this. So I'm just sitting at the table. I can't eat. I can't stomach anything right now. And he's just like, my husband asked me like, do you want to go home? And I'm like, no, just let Kai finish eating. I'm trying to hold my composure together. And I just show him, I took a picture of what came out of me and I show my husband like the toilet it was so bloody like the inside of the toilet the water was just bloody it was just red and but you could see this big mass of something big and dark in there and I said this is what came out of me and I just remember him just looking like like just shocked so we went home and then I went home and I just felt this sadness just look cuz I'm human I would be a robot <laughs> if I didn't have emotions and I just remember feeling so sad and I was just telling my husband all I wanted was a baby that's all I wanted I just wanted a baby and I don't understand why this is happening to me I don't know what I'm supposed to learn in this situation but it hurts especially when you don't know anyone personally who has gone through it so you can't really ask for advice you can't really ask for um, you can ask for advice for advice but you want someone encouraging who has been through the same thing that you're going through. Like it's it's one thing to give advice if you've never been in this situation, but it's another thing coming from someone who's experienced it firsthand. And I just felt sad and I said, I feel like I'm doing this alone. Not that my husband wasn't helping me because he was an extremely big part of just getting me through this, but he's a man, he's not a woman. And I was like, I feel like I don't have anyone to talk to about this, someone who knows who's been through this. And I just kind of feel like I'm going through this by myself and I kind of feel like that with my life a lot of things I experience I experience by myself because people around me are just not on that level or they don't allow themselves to be honest about the things that they're going through so it's hard to talk to people who who aren't willing to deal with themselves when you're in a position where you want to deal with yourself so I just kind of felt again like I'm alone again I just remember just feeling sad that night and allowing myself to feel sad I allowed myself to get in a position where I was vulnerable enough to share my feelings, y'all, because I have a hard time expressing my feelings because I hate feeling like I'm being a burden to someone. The last thing I want to be is a burden. So I would prefer to just deal with it internally or not say anything at all because I do not want to burden you or I don't want to be misunderstood. Because sometimes I feel like I'm the most misunderstood person in America. <laughs> I really do. A lot of times people think that you're strong um, because you don't disclose like your information or you're not as vulnerable. In my case, I'm the type of person, like I mentioned before, I, I don't like to you know, be in a position where I feel like I'm making someone, um, I'm burdening someone so I won't share or be vulnerable with people. And what that does is people then think you're fine and you're strong all the time because um, I'm the type of person where I can put my emotions in check. So people think that either you know you're strong and you got it all together and they don't need to check up on you because you know, well, Jessica, she's fine, she's strong, and da 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 da, when that's not the case at all. I am a very strong person and I feel like that strength, God did give me a certain amount of strength for a reason but at the same time I'm human and you have to be in a position where you allow yourself get out of your head and stop thinking that's the thing get out of your head and stop thinking that if if I share this or allowing your past to dictate how you present yourself in the future or the present state I've, I think the reason why I kind of have this guard up to where I don't want to be vulnerable or share my feelings is because growing up in like a large family um being the the eldest out of a herd of children when I mean a herd I mean like what nine ten your feelings aren't very 
your feelings aren't you're not in a position to express yourself because there's just so much going on there's too many people here too many personalities and when you're the oldest you're kind of there as the help and I kind of felt that way like I'm just here as backup as help you know to my parents because there's a lot of kids here so I kind of felt like my feelings were never really heard or thought about and when I would express myself to people they would then backstab me and I learned my lessons real quick <laughs> so if you show me your true color sis it only takes one time it only takes one time for me and I'm like okay cool um I ain't gotta hate you but I definitely won't be sharing anything with you or anyone else at that at, at this point because I refuse to put myself in that position again so I had this guard and this wall up where it's hard for me to be vulnerable and hard for me to express my feelings but y'all going through a miscarriage something as devastating as losing a child and especially the way I was losing this child because I've watched videos of women at, I got to the point where I was actually watching videos of women who had miscarriages and not that they made it seem like it was easy but it seemed like their process wasn't as lengthy as mine because they were like yeah you know either they had the bleeding for a couple of days or they would have that miscarriage that same day the day that they started feeling weird they would have the miscarriage no one explained no, I've, I have not seen not one video where someone said they were bleeding heavy for 20 whole days y'all it was 20 days I was bleeding it was crazy like it was like taking all of my energy and thank God that my blood count because I was bleeding so much I had to go back to the emergency room. I know I'm kind of like jumping everywhere trying to get all of this into one video because I've been away for so long. But I was I went back to the emergency room because of the bleeding. It was so it was intense. The doctor was like the amount of blood that you're losing, you know, it's alarming. But what's even more strange is the fact that your blood count is increasing like you have more blood now than you did when you first came in and usually you would either have the same blood count or in your case have a lower blood count because of how much blood you're losing but your blood count is increasing which is strange we've never seen that so I know that was only God that was keeping me afloat because I didn't have dizzy spells the amount of blood I was losing y'all I should have I should have fainted I should have felt dizzy lightheaded and I had none of that like I had no pain I had light cramping but it was like an irritating feeling. It wasn't a painful feeling. It was just like that little, like I felt something that was there. And I'm just like, this is annoying. It was more of an annoyance. Is that a word? Maybe a week later, I was still bleeding. I passed something else came out of me. This time I was at home. I was able to collect it. And it was just, it was really gross. <laughs> I was like, oh, what is this coming out of me? More stuff. Like, this is, this is insane. So after I passed twice, two big, huge things. Um, and I was still bleeding after that. I still felt pregnant. So it was just weird because I'm like, look, either I have this miscarriage and let that be the end of it. But why do I still feel pregnant? I'm taking pregnancy tests, y'all. They're still coming back positive, not faint, very dark lines. And I'm like, I've already passed this stuff. It's been 20 days. Why am I still getting positive pregnancy tests? Like it doesn't make any sense. I st and guys, the nausea kicked in full gear. I've never thrown up in any of my pregnancies. After I passed twice, the nausea just went up the roof. Like pregnancy nausea and the morning sickness, I would smell something and it would just make me just Ugh. and I was cooking tacos my husband's mom and his brother was here and I'm cooking tacos in the kitchen and I, I cut into a potato and that potato <laughs> did not sit well with my senses and I just ran to the bathroom throwing up and to the point where it's confusing everybody because you know my, my mother-in-law she's like Jessica you still are you still look pregnant like what's what's going on and it was just confusing me so I had another appointment scheduled. I went to that appointment and um, there was no, there's no, there was no pregnancy. There was no, my uterus was starting to shrink. All the contents were already out. And the doctor told me that your levels were extremely high. It's going to take a lot of time for them to, you know, come fully out of your system. But um, this doctor was very just like gentle, very, you know, some doctors can be very, very cold hearted, very just like blunt because they've seen this before. But she was very 
gentle and very just like you know I just want to let you know this is not your fault and I know this is hard to hear right now but look at it as a blessing because whatever was wrong with the baby your body responded to what was best for you and that baby because if that baby had to grow up with that abnormal abnormality or deformity if the baby had to grow up that way it, it would it wouldn't be fair for that baby so the body responds and it may be heartbreaking and it will be heartbreaking but just think of it as your body doing what it was created to do and it was a perspective that made the process a bit more understanding not easier but understanding Another thing that really helped me get through this, obviously prayer helped me get through this. God showed me so many things. It was like a learning lesson for me to be vulnerable, to be vulnerable, to express myself, not hold things in. I'm um, also to allow myself to feel. It's okay to feel. It's okay to, it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel. It's okay to express yourself. Um, even with my husband, like letting him know how I was feeling and different things like that, it, it, it's okay you don't have to be strong for everybody being encouraged by people with a faith base that helps so much because when I was first going through it I avoided anybody who I felt would be emotional about the situation like you can't be more emotional than me about this <laughs> so I was you know talking to people who I know God works through and they just really helped me out so much they really encouraged me they prayed for me they gave me just just encouraged my encouraged me even though it doesn't look like it now there's good to come out of this and I do believe that because of how I felt during the process there were moments where I felt sad but it was like right away God's peace would come in and wrap me up and I just felt strength you know I would go outside and I would literally you know I'm having a miscarriage but it did not consume me. I wasn't, a, it didn't consume me. It didn't consume my thoughts. It didn't consume how I felt. I got to the point where I'm like, if it's God's will for there to be a, a child in there, then it will be. And if it's not his will, then it won't be. But at the end of the day, God is still in control and he's still good. I remember going into the restroom and sitting on the toilet and I just started sobbing and crying. This was like early on when I was having my miscarriage and I was just like, like Lord why is this happening to me why me like all I wanted to do was be a mom like isn't that your will and now I'm going through this like it's just not it's just not fair and right when I was beginning to have my little you know pity party I remember the Holy Spirit just literally urging me and speaking to me and saying start thanking Jesus for everything you have start thanking him for everything you have and I am not going to lie in that moment I wanted to be in my feelings so I was like um I'm going through something right now like God is good but I'm going through something right now and I want to have my moment but it was like I just kept getting urged just start saying thank you Jesus even if you don't feel like it right now just start saying it so I did I started saying I just started saying thank you thank you Jesus like thank you thank you Jesus for everything then I started to be specific about the things I was thankful for and then it was like this long list of things I was thankful for and then I was like Lord Thank you for allowing me to carry my daughter and I have this beautiful child who's full of life who's a blessing to me God like you are so good even through this storm that I'm going through right now you're still keeping me like you're still keeping me and I'm just grateful and I'm thankful and immediately my attitude changed I was like the pity party was over pack your bags go home because it was done I was done doing that I was like no God has been too good for me to be sitting down here tripping. And yes, this is devastating. I'm going to cry. I'm going to have my moments. But as quickly as I have those moments, as quickly as I'm going to get back on track and not allow myself to live and remain in those moments. So I did not allow myself to become just a victim or to become, you know, any of that. I was like, no, I want to be strong during this process. I want God's strength, true strength to to feel me and I want to be able to learn and also this process has taught me to be compassionate you know now I'm able to be um, a witness and of, of encouragement to women who have who have had miscarriages who are going through them and different things like that like I'm more sensitive to that because I've experienced it but I can encourage them that girl this is not it's not over it's not done and what God has for you will be it may not come when you want it to come but it will be and you don't have to worry about it and he will if you allow him to he will get you through this and he got me through it y'all 
that's all I wanted to share. I can't, I, do, I wanted to come back here when I was emotionally um, able to speak about it without crying. It just, I don't feel sad. <laughs> I'm not sad about it anymore. So, you know, I know a lot of like videos on miscarriage, the reason why I was avoiding watching them because they were just very sad and rightfully so i'm not blaming anyone for not being sad over it i just needed to be encouraged during that moment i didn't want to be sad on top of being sad so i hope this video helps someone who has gone through a miscarriage or maybe you know someone who has and you can encourage and help them that at the end of the day god's plan and his will will come and i know look I know for a fact that we will have our child when it's the right time for us to have that child. So this this process didn't discourage me. It didn't frighten me and scare me not to try and again and different things like that. No, I was just like this just wasn't the time and it was and whatever it was, it was not for right now. And so I think the hardest part during this whole process was telling my daughter um, about it because um, she was like so excited y'all she would tell any and everybody she came across random people out and about that her mom was pregnant she was so excited about it and she would always talk about the baby this girl would make sure that I, she she knows shrimp is my favorite food right so she'll be like mom you can't eat shrimp you got a baby the baby can't eat shrimp the baby's allergic like she would make sure that I wouldn't do certain things and I was just like you're gonna be up bomb big sister like I already know she is and she's gonna be a lot of help so uh telling her was the hardest part when we told her I said Bubby you know how mommy had a baby in her stomach and she's like yeah and I'm like well God needed the baby to help him do some more work in heaven so he took the baby back but he's gonna give it back to you later and so she was just looking at me but then she looked down at my stomach and I still had a little pregnancy belly and she was like you tricking me mom you tricking me <laughs> and I'm like no Bubby I'm not tricking you baby like mommy's not pregnant anymore the baby is in heaven with God now and she's just like oh okay but she was not believing me um we were at a restaurant where we told her and she was just finishing her food like she wasn't really here for it like okay I think my mama's playing because my mama do be playing with me so she's playing so when we were on our way home in the car she was like mom are you pregnant and I said, no, baby, remember mommy told you that, you know, the baby had to do help God with some work in heaven. So the baby went back to heaven. So, yeah, baby, mommy doesn't have a, a baby in her belly anymore. And I think that's when it hit her and she just started crying. And she kept saying, I want to be a big sister. I want my baby. And that was hard to hear. So I thank God for the strength that I had in that moment that I wasn't broken when I told her because I would have lost my mind. I would have lost it. I would have been crying and I would not want to be in that position while trying to comfort her. So I was able to comfort her and then just, you know, help her and encourage her. And now she's like, mom, the baby's in heaven working, right? He's, he's helping God or she's helping God. I'm like, yeah, she's helping God. And then she's going to come back after God. Um, after they do what they need to do in there, then God's going to bring her back to you. And she's like, okay. And now she's fine. <laughs> like kids get over things quick. Like they just know how to move on. So we can learn a lot from kids. So that is all. I'm out of breath. This is the first video I have filmed in two months, y'all. It's been two months since I actually have filmed a video. And it's, it's, it feels good to be back. <laughs> it does. So I am so... I'm just I feel so much better I feel renewed I feel stronger I feel like I've learned a lot during this process and God has kept me and maintained me leave me a comment down below if you've ever experienced miscarriage or if you know anyone who's experienced miscarriage and also if you want to leave me a comment about what videos I should film next I had a whole list of content that I was gonna film but we had to put that on hold but girl she's back in business and we're gonna get that content out because i'm excited about filming again and yeah that is all guys i thank you guys so much for watching my videos i appreciate you guys i love you guys especially like the the ones who really just be like sis i'm praying for you take your time okay take your time i appreciate you be sure to subscribe to my channel channel comment down below give this video a thumbs up and i will see you guys in my next video Bye.